Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, today is gonna to be a fun day at a very interesting experiment. I've been running these new rigs on my catfish rods, the stinger flies, and been having a lot of success. Been getting a lot of extra fish on the fly itself, not the live or cut bait I've been using. So today I'm gonna to be fishing a shallow backwater creek, and I'm gonna be pulling these rigs under balloons through the shallows. And I'm very curious to see if there's any fish back here, number one, obviously that's the goal number one always is to catch fish. Also want to see how these flies perform though and see if they get any extra fish, if they get any extra attention through there, especially working in the shallows where there's all these bait fish, all these shad back here. So I'm making my way back here in this creek right now. Probably going to start out in about two to three foot depth, get my balloon rig set up and we're going to start trolling out here and hopefully catch some fish. Come with me. Let's get them. Okay guys, so here is the rig that I'm running. I've got my circle hook. It's a 10 aught size, Mustad Demon Circle. And I've got that with a no knot snail. And my tag end, I've left a little bit longer, a few inches longer. And down on the bottom end of that, I've tied on my stinger fly. And again, I've got a link for these down in the video description also. My friend Dewey had hand tied me some. And then these here I bought on Amazon that are pretty comparable. So normally if I'm fishing deep, I'm running a Carolina rig where I have a big egg sinker here above this. And then I fish this vertically off the kayak, just right off the bottom. Well today in the shallows, I've taken my egg sinker off and I'm going to tie a balloon on, just a regular party balloon, partially inflated. Going to put it up here about two to three foot up my line so that as I pull through the shallows, this rig, I'll have a piece of cut bait and I've already, I've cut up a skipjack head and a midsection. I'm gonna be running two rods today. I'm gonna to have a head and a midsection on pulling behind me. The cut bait will be on the hook, the stinger fly pulling behind me as I troll along so that hopefully I've got two presentations. I've got the cut bait putting off scent and then I've got the fly swimming along behind it. Now these party balloons, again, very simple. Let me put a little air in this. pretty easy for me to do because I'm full of hot air, as a lot of people would say. To attach the balloon to the line, you're just gonna do an overhand knot. Basically just how you would tie a balloon, a party balloon or water balloon, whatever you're doing, just how you would tie it like normal. You do that, but just put the line through there. And so now I can slide this balloon with just a little bit of tension, a little bit of pressure, I can slide it up my line to put it whatever distance I want. And the depth here in this creek is gonna change. Right now I'm four feet deep. I'm gonna cast these baits out. They're gonna be two and a half, three feet deep behind me where I start. And I'm gonna start trolling my way out of this backwater creek. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kinda of go down the middle, go along the sides and just kinda of cruise through here at about a half a mile an hour, pulling these baits behind me, hoping that I either come buy some fish or they pick up on my scent trail and come get the baits. But that's gonna be the plan this morning is go through here and as the depth changes, I will change the balloons. But when fish are up on the shallows, especially this shallow, they are actively feeding. They're cruising around looking for an easy meal. So if I'm out fishing deep water, I like my baits to stay within about two to three feet off the bottom. In this situation, I don't care as much because let's say I'm, I'm out 10 feet deep and my baits are five to seven feet off the bottom. Not as big a deal because again, fish are very active. They're very aggressive. They'll come up higher to get those baits in this situation than they will if I'm out in a deeper water area. So up, I'm gonna have my bait set, you know, about my balloon set anyway, about two and a half three feet away from my bottom hook. And I won't change that again until I get beyond about 10 feet deep, which I probably won't do today, to be quite honestly, and unless I'm just not getting bit back here in the shallow. So anyway, enough of me flapping my gums. Let's get these baits on here and get some, get some fish today. Oh, look right here, y'all. Look right here. Oh yeah, I'm hooked. I'm hooked up. He's down there thrashing. That's on the chunk. I got the head on the left of the kayak and this chunk on the other side. And I think it's going to be a really small fish, but it's fish number one. That's a skunk buster. Sometimes you don't always get rid of that skunk, y'all. So 
can't be complaining about the first one. He did get the cut bait, not the stinger fly. But boy, he's small. We got nowhere to go but up from here, y'all. Well, this fish has set the bar very low. <laughs> okay. There he is. Yeah, y'all, fish number one. Nothing to write home about. But it's a start. Let me get my rig set up here. Yeah, y'all, that cut bait's being pulled through the water. My fly's going along right behind it. I'm pretty optimistic about this. We may be about to get another one here, y'all. See if I can get it on my balloon back there. It was getting hit. I'm cutting me another bait here. Yeah, maybe I'm finally, maybe I'm finally running into some fish here. I'm gonna finish getting this bait ready. This is just a chunk of skipjack. I've got skipjack and bluegill. He was hitting it again. <laughs> I'm gonna get this bait out real quick. I've got skipjack and bluegill to use for bait today. Starting out with skipjack. They try the bluegill a little bit later on. This setup here, I'm pretty much just running two rods. I could run planer boards and run more get a little distance between them, but you hook a big fish in the shallows, your kayak's gonna get spun around every which way, and you end up with a tangled mess, so <laughs> I prefer to keep it as simple as possible. Now I'm gonna stand up here, got my balloon, got my bait, give it a toss back there, and then I'm just gonna let out a little bit more line. I'm not running these things really far behind me, 30 yards or so maybe, um, you know, maybe if that. So don't have to have them super far back. Just enough to put a little distance between the kayak and the fish. Oh, 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 that balloon's under, man. He's got it. He's got it, that's on the head. That's on the head, y'all. Let me just hit the spotlight button right here while I fight this fish. Why don't I keep him from pulling me back in my other line? Man, he knew, that's what's fun about this shallow water balloon fish, and they'll nail it. I don't think this is going to be a very big fish either, but boy, he, he took off. This fish ain't fighting right, I'll tell you that. Oh, it's a small one. Yeah, it's a small one. I wonder if this fish here... Now he's going to show out. I was wondering if he got the stinger or the bait. He's got the bait, he's got it. He's got that head bait choked, man. <laughs> head baits, you know, them heads are pretty large baits and that ain't a very big fish, but my gosh, he's got that whole thing down in his mouth. I hate to ruin this fish's day, but he's gonna give it back too. Come here, fish. You gonna give me that head bait back whether you want to or not now. Look at that thing. He has choked that hate. Yep. Quit that now. Acting out here. This fish is mad at me. Bring him on camera. He's upset he's got that hook in his mouth, but he said he's more upset that he's being filmed right now and ain't getting paid for it. These fish today, they're all divas, you know. They they expect a paycheck anytime the camera's rolling. My bait's still looking pretty good there. Just another another small. Get out of here. He tried to take my thumb out on the way. Y'all saw it. I would call the law on that fish. Well, another bite. Still fairly quick into the trip here. Get that little sly boy. He messed up my line. Got that thing all nasty and slimy. Got all that. Look at that. That is nasty stuff right there, man. All right, let's cast this back out. I'm gonna get back on the move here. I'm using, I don't know if I mentioned in the intro, but my speed is slow. 0 0.3, 0 0.5 miles an hour usually. And I'm gonna cast that out. And I'm just gonna let out a little bit more line, get it 30, 50 yards behind me as I make my way out. 0 0.3, 0 0.5. 
right now I'm five feet deep. I'm just gonna work my way out of this creek here, just pulling these baits along and we'll eventually come across some more fish. Okay, y'all, so I've spent about an hour and a half now just kind of working up and down in this creek. Really just not a lot going on. You know, small fish, some dink taps here and there, just not the results that I'm hoping to get this morning. So I'm gonna pack up and leave this creek and go out to the main channel. Still gonna fish the shallows, still gonna fish under balloons, but I'm gonna get out in the main channel and work on a flat out there and see if I can't get, I can't do any worse out there than what I've done in here. This creek has been a total bust thus far. So let's go out there and see what we can find. Oh, y'all, right here. Look right here. This rod's getting hit. I, I don't see my balloon. I'm gonna just crank down. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm hooked up. He must just been coming at me or something. Y'all, I've moved out to the main channel. I've come out here, got up on this flat main channel here. There's a deep side of the ledge. The other side of the ledge comes up and then you got a flat that's just a few feet deep. And I've come up over here kind of on the top of the drop right before it goes off real sharp. Um, this fish has spun me around here. I was about eight feet deep. That's another small. But uh, working down through here now, the creek wasn't getting it done for me. And so I thought I'm gonna come over here and just see what's going on in the main channel. Very quickly got this fish, just another small eater size chan or blue cat there. He did give me the bait back, which is nice. I just switched out my baits when I got over here just to uh, freshen everything up. But I'm gonna spend a little time out here now because the creek back there just wasn't, it just wasn't producing. And uh, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes they in there, sometimes they ain't. There's that bait, that's what it looks like there under the balloon. I'm all, boy about fell out of the kayak, I've backlash myself, I'm in bad shape here y'all. Got the professional overrun here. I'm gonna get myself working back down through here. Let this line out again, 30 to 50 yards or so. And just cover some water down through here. There's maybe you can see this little island here. I'm gonna go on the left side of it. But this side up here on the right, real shallow, just a few feet deep, flat, comes out and then drops off. And I wanna be right on the edge, right on the top edge here, right where it goes off. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Fish on. There's a fish on. He's pulling too, man. Oh, he's a pulling. Let me turn the motor off here just a second. Boy, these fish will get you spun fast, man. Even the small ones can jerk this lightweight kayak around. I got some brush or something over here. I don't want to get him in. I'll just come by this island. <laughs> That's fun, y'all. Oh, he's thrashing around there. I think this is gonna be the biggest one of the morning, which ain't saying much. It's been a been a slow bite out here today. Bite's been slow. Quality's not been good. But some days like that. Some days you just gotta grind. Yeah, that's another, that's another what I call dink probably the biggest of the morning thus far. He may be one I throw on my board for my small fish tournament after he drenches me, good gosh. That daggone fish. <laughs> Let me get myself spun back here. He's got me in a complete daggone circle. This daggone fish here, man, got me sopping wet. He's still wound up. Hey, fish, hey. Listen, now, you gonna get it under control. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell your mama this fish mama wouldn't do nothing anyway. Wouldn't give it no butt whooping. These parents today, they don't care. He's got a lot to say down there too, bad mouthing me. Using all kinds of bad language toward me. Let's just throw this thing on the board and see what, see what this board says. Look at this one's whisker. Let me show you this first. 
Look at this whisker. He's got a a split whisker. This fish, he's probably been made fun of his whole life. It ain't no wonder he's acting out. All the school children have made fun of this fish. No, he's too big for my small fish tournament. They gotta be under 30 inches for me to score them. He's about 30 and a half there. So larger dink, smaller fun size. He's definitely fun. Get on out here. Let me see that whisker again. Look at that thing. Yo, yo thing. Yo. He gone. All right, y'all. That was fun. Let me look at this. Got me just sopping wet here. I'm going to get myself repositioned again. Even a fish like that. They just get you spun and get you to get the kayak pulling backwards. I'm going to get myself going back down through here, though. But that's two fish pretty quickly up here on this flat. So I'm a lot more encouraged right now than what I was when I was an hour and a half into that creek back there. Well, y'all, about to pull another change here. So I come out to the main channel. I've been working downstream. Don't have any current out here today, but I was just working my way down river. Well, the wind has decided to kick up and it's not bad, but it's enough. I'm moving down through here, no motor speed. I'm at 1.3 miles an hour way too fast for what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to get spun around, go the other direction, go into the wind so that I can control my speed. Again, this type of fishing, you want to be moving slow, around a half a mile an hour. So that's gonna get you the most bites. And with this wind blowing like it is uh, from behind me here, can't control my speed going this direction. You know, I got something messing with that orange balloon back there. That is a bluegill head. I switched out baits a little while ago and decided to give the bluegill a shot. Something was after it. You come up there messing with it. It's exciting though, y'all. When, when I see my rod start to get messed with and I glance back and, and there's a balloon getting pulled under, or it's shooting across the surface there. It's like, it's like being a kid again and watching your, your float go under when you bluegill fishing or something, you know? But uh, speaking of that though, that's another question I get asked a lot in the previous videos I've done is uh, with these balloons is why I'm using a balloon and not a float or a bobber. And the, the easy answer to that is why use a float and bobber instead of a balloon. These balloons, they don't take up much space, which is at a premium here in the kayak. You can inflate them to whatever size that you need for the particular bait that you're using. You know, heavier, larger baits need a bigger float or balloon and smaller, you know, needs smaller. Um, I'm, I'm distracted, I'm waiting on that dang balloon to go down there if that fish was in it. But, uh, you know, is again, for me, it's mostly just a cost and save, uh, save on space. Uh, a pack of balloons will cost you a dollar and change at Walmart and a pack of balloons will last, no more often than I do this, it'll last me a few years, you know, versus those floats, individual floats are a few dollars a piece, take up more space. So that's the answer to that. I guess that fish, I was hoping while I was rambling on, he was gonna come back and bite it. But he's he's the, he's either ripped the bait off or he's thought better of it. But um, and I'm I'm actually starting to think something right there was splashing too. I'm starting to think better of it myself too. It's been an experiment with these stinger flies I've been wanting to do for a while now. Under these balloons, I think I've just picked the wrong day for it. It's just turned ten o'clock here now, and uh, so you know three three and a half hours here on the water not much action going on either in the creek or up here on this flat kind of thinking about taking the balloons off getting out in deeper water and just trying to scrounge up a bite and see what's going on there because i just don't think it's a good day for the shallows at least not where i'm at anyway but um, enough of me rambling on in this segment this will be a half hour long if i keep talking but I'm going to give a little bit more time here with these. If other fish comes back or I run into any more, we may get out here and, and test the deeper water. Oh, right here, y'all, right here. Fish on, fish on. It has been a long time, y'all. Long time between bites. I thought it might be going on in the deeper water since I wasn't doing no good in the shallows and boy, I was wrong. <laughs> it ain't been no better over here in the, 
in a deeper depth. Yes, and here's a pullin' though. He ate a skipjack head. I got skipjack and bluegill on right now. A head midsection of each. Yeah, that's gonna be the biggest one of the morning. That's a fun sizer. Boy, I'm happy to get him too. I wasn't sure I was gonna get anything of decent quality today. It has been tough out here. Sometimes it's like that in the shallows, you know, if they ain't in the shallows, they just ain't there. But you can still be catching them deep. But thus far today, it's not really, not been the case. I've been fishing deeper depths now about an hour. Look right here, look right here. That ain't got the stinger. Well, he's a gurgling too. He got the stinger right in the top of the jaw. Right on top of the mouth. Oh, oh, and there he went too. Doggone it. Quick release on him. He broke my dang stinger off. Daggum it. Daggone it. Finally get a decent fish and botch the landing and break the stinger off. Well, I ain't gonna tie on another stinger right now. I'm just gonna send that bait back down. See if I can't get another one. Yeah, y'all, hard times out here this morning. I really thought when I wasn't getting bit in the shallows, I was like, well, I just screwed it up. I should have been out here a little bit deeper. So I've come down this ledge. I'm, I'm working a brake line here 40 feet deep and been working it a good stretch here, you know, over an hour now. That was my first bite. The first time, I've not had like small fish, dinks, anything coming up and nipping at baits, nothing. So uh, that was, you know, a decent fish right there. I mean, it's a respectable fish. Looked like he had maybe come after the bait and got the stinger. The stinger wasn't in the mouth. It looked like it was on, on the top lip, like up, up above. So he may have just got snagged with that stinger hook when he tried to get the bait and, and rolled on it or something. Broke that dang old thing off, man. I'm like, I'm snake bitten out here this morning. But I'm gonna fish just a little while longer. I'm, I'm trying to limit my time in the kayak right now because I've been dealing with some sciatica and uh, that's getting a lot better. Been going to the chiropractor for that and, and stretching and that's that's helped a lot but i'm still not 100 percent, so i'm not going to fish too terribly much longer but uh, just one of them days you know i'll probably go ahead and publish this video anyway because i have been taking more time off with the sciatica and you know the the informational aspect of this video early on was setting up the rigs tying on the balloons and stuff like that i get asked those questions a lot so i think there's some value in that even though the fishing today has been uh, the bites anyway have been sparse <laughs> fortunately oh it's not just been with me i've met a couple people out here recognize me from videos that have stopped as they went by and chatted and nobody's done particularly well today that i've heard of so that makes me feel at least a little bit better but i'll undoubtedly i'll get on facebook and somebody will have tore it up out here today you know the bite will have been on fire he's always fish eating somewhere just maybe not where i'm at a particular time but uh, anyway i'm gonna just drift down a little bit further here if i don't get any more fish i'm gonna call this the end of the video if i do well we'll have a little bonus fish right after this segment but either way i appreciate you watching we'll do it again soon see you then oh my bluegill head's got hit now there goes my bluegill head well let's get us a bonus fish let's get us a bonus fish well that's a pulling too now that's a pulling well, if you've stuck around this far in the video, God bless you. I don't know how you've done it, but you're going to see a bonus fish on a bluegill head. I brought me out a couple bluegill today just for variety's sake. Pulled them under balloons for a while. Had one get stripped there, uh, but no, no solid action on the balloon rigs. And this one here, he's a lassoed mess. Look at this. He got the hook in the jaw and he's got the stinger wrapped around him lasso. Oh no, he's gonna act out now. Come here, fish, let's get you. I'm getting another rod getting hit somewhere. No, I ain't, I'm imagining things, I guess. Boy, it's in here, he's, he's too calm. And you know why he's calm? It's cause that stinger hook has lassoed him here. And when I get him undone, he's gonna thrash around and act a fool. I knew it. I knew it. I knew I'd get him undone, get him unlassoed. Oh, Lord, 
days. I called it. I called it. When they feel that constriction of the line wrapping around them, it, it calms them down about four or five notches. But when that, that constriction releases, they act like that. And now he ain't gonna open his mouth for me. Fish, you on video acting like this. You done threw my bluegill head off. I'll get you up under the gill, by gosh, if you don't want to open that mouth. That's fine, we get you in one way or another now. I can't be bending over like that. that you cause me malfunction, fish. I feel fine standing up. It's trying to bend over or stay in a sitting position a long period of time. I just overdone it there a couple weeks ago in the kayak. Let me throw him on the board here, see what he'll do for me. There ain't but five or six of him still left watching anyway. Oh Lord, that one's barely over 30 inches. Just barely over. But he's he's too big for a small fish tournament. Snake bitten today. All right, y'all. One final look at him there. Well, y'all, there's one bonus fish. I uh, went a long stretch here, nothing going on. Hooked that other. Now a couple minutes later got that one, so. We'll see, who knows, maybe we'll get a second boat of fish on there. <laughs>